Well, it's an honor to be here tonight in Tennessee. My name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years, and now for 16 years I've been an evangelist doing seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I tell people right up front that I believe the Bible is the infallible, inspired, inerrant word of the living God. I believe it from cover to cover. I even believe the cover on mine. It says Kent Hovind. And for those that don't know, the Bible is your basic instructions before leaving earth. You really ought to read the book because you're going to be gone for an awfully long time. I mean, when you leave here, there ain't no coming back, so make sure you're going to the right spot. Okay. Now, one of my jobs as a Christian is to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh the reason of the hope that's in us. I think in the last few hundred years, the Christians have not done a good job of answering this evolution theory and we've allowed this philosophy of evolution, actually it's a religion, we've allowed this religion to take over our school system, our legal system, our whole thinking process now is based on a philosophy which has zero scientific evidence. None. We've been offering a quarter million dollars for anybody with any real scientific ev evidence for evolution. That offer's been out there about 12 years now. There is no evidence for it whatsoever. People believe in it, I understand, but that doesn't make it science. Now, there are three things to try to accomplish in my seminar. Number one, I want to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. Number two, if you're not saved, I want to try to get you converted. I'll tell you right up front, I'm after you, okay? I'm not sneaking up on you. I'm after you, all right? Number three, if you're saved and you're not doing much for the Lord, then I'm going to try to make you uncomfortable. All right? You know where we're going now. Okay. Okay, this is not my wife. That's just a picture of her. Last summer was our 31st anniversary, and we sat down and figured out how much money we have spent since we got married. We have spent all of it. <laughs> we live in Pensacola, Florida. What's left of it? Hurricane Ivan about blew it off the map. <laughs> but uh, we're having a, we're a good time rebuilding down there. I have three children, one of each, and I got them all married off, and the dog died. So I made it. Praise God, I am home free. It is wonderful. And for those that don't know, we now have the whole family working in our ministry there and have four grandkids so far. And for those that don't understand this, grandkids are God's reward for not killing your own kids when you thought about it. <laughs> How many have already figured that out? You've already met the, yeah, that's great, isn't it? All right. And all of them live right around me and they all work in our ministry. They all want to serve God with their life. That's worth something to somebody. We have about 40 people in our ministry and we want to do things that will help strengthen your faith in God's Word. We want to change people's worldview. There are two ways to look at this world. That's called your world view. How do you view this world? Some people look at the world one way and some look at another way. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the way you view the world determines how you will answer the four great questions of life. There are four fundamental questions that every single religion on planet Earth tries to answer. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going when I die? The way you answer those questions is totally determined by your world view. Some people look at the world and say, you know, it's amazing. A big bang made this from nothing. That's the humanist worldview based on the evolution theory. Other people look at the world and say, you know, there's incredible design. There must be a designer. That's the creationist worldview based on creation. And those two worldviews are at war with each other. I mean, somebody is wrong. And I enjoy showing them who they are. I've done a lot of debates, over 90, 92 debates now I've done at universities. One here at UT Knoxville against Dr. Pigliucci. Debated him twice. I'll be glad to do it again. I don't think he will, but uh, I'll be honored. You know, the, the guys I debate are a lot smarter than I am, but I slaughter them because I'm right and they're wrong. You know, it's real simple, real simple. But if the evolution theory is true, how would you answer the four great questions of life? Who am I and what am I worth? Well, if evolution is true, you're nothing important. You're just a piece of protoplasm that washed up on the beach. You're not worth a thing. Actually, you're part of the problem, you see, because you are one of the polluters of the environment. And the more of you we can get rid of, the better. See, that's normal thinking if evolution is true. Where did I come from? Well, if evolution is true, you came from a cosmic burp about 20 billion years ago. Why am I here? What's the purpose of life? Well, if evolution is true, there's no purpose to life, so you might as well have fun. If it feels good, do it. Where am I going when I die? Well, if evolution is true, you're going to the grave and you're going to get recycled into a worm or a plant. But see, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if that's true, that puts a whole different set of answers to those questions. That means we better try to figure out who God is and find out what He wants and do what He says, because He created this place, which means He owns it, which means He makes the rules. We better find out what he wants. And if you're not obeying his rules, you may be in trouble one of these days. 
We're going to get into more of that later. But boy, the devil doesn't like this idea that God created the earth. The devil came to Eve in the Garden of Eden. The first thing he said to the woman, he said, Eve, hath God said? Yea, hath God said? He's, tr he's, he's trying to raise doubts about God's Word. Satan always tries to raise doubts about God's Word. That's one of the reasons we've got all this confusion on the different Bible versions. You know, where is God's Word? Is it over here? I don't know where it is. We cover more on that on video 7. The second thing he said to the woman, he said, Ye shall not surely die. He's calling God a liar, basically. The third thing he said to Eve is what I want to talk to you about tonight. He said, Eve, if you eat off that tree, ye shall be as gods. And right there is where the whole idea of evolution got started. It didn't start with Charlie Darwin. <laughs> it started with Satan in the Garden of Eden. He wants you to think you can become a god. Yes, boys and girls, we started like an amoeba, and we're evolving. We're getting bigger and better and stronger and smarter, and someday we're going to sail around the universe and discover new life forms like Star Trek. People ask me all the time, they say, Hovind, do you think there's intelligent life on other planets? I say, nope. I taught high school 15 years. There's not much intelligent life on this planet. <laughs> I didn't get to see a whole lot of it. Satan's a liar. He said, you can be like God. I'll tell you what, the Mormon church has swallowed that. They teach their people, if you're a good Mormon, when you go to heaven, you get to become God. And if you're a good Mormon wife, when you go to heaven, you get to be eternally pregnant, producing spirit babies. My wife don't want to go. She said, that's not heaven, honey. <laughs> By the way, there are some great books to reach Mormons and a good website, UTLM, Utah Lighthouse Mission org. If you want to reach Mormons, you ought to study that one. I was surprised to find out a couple years ago, some of the major Catholic theologians of the past have taught man can become God. It's still in their catechism right now. Now, most Catholics don't believe that, and they don't even realize some of their leaders have taught that. But even Kenneth Copeland said, Adam in the Garden of Eden was God manifest in the flesh. He said, you don't have a God in you, you are one. I'm sorry, Kenneth, you're crazy about that, okay? Kenneth Hagin said, the believer is called Christ, that's who we are, we're Christ. No, you're crazy, the job's not available, and you couldn't do it if you had it, okay? You're not God, right? Nor are you Christ. Walk on water sometime, I want to see that. Lucifer is the one who wants to be God. Lucifer said, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. See, Satan wants to be God, but the job's not available, so he's all upset about that, and he can't be God. So he lied to Eve and told her she could be like God. Now, Satan hates us, though, because we're made in God's image. And boy, Eve fell for that hook, line, and sinker. Wow, I get to be God. Now, Hitler said, if you tell a lie long enough and loud enough and often enough, the people will believe it. He said, they're more likely to believe a big lie than a small one. If you want to get somebody to believe a lie, you have to do it like my two big brothers did to me. I have two older brothers. They've always been older than I am. They still are today, I believe. But when I was about six years old, I was raised in East Peoria, Illinois. By the way, I know I'm in Tennessee, but are there any more Yankees in the crowd? Any Yankees out there? Five, six, seven. Okay, and how many Southerners do we have? Ooh, well, just remember who won, if you would. Um, <laughs> I know it ain't over yet. <laughs> but I was raised in East Pure. I couldn't help that. But I did move to Florida as soon as I got smart enough to figure out, you know, the South is going to rise again. But uh, I was about six years old. I came running in for breakfast one morning, and I was the first one there for breakfast. So I got the last banana out of the bowl to put on my cereal. Well, a few minutes later, my two big brothers came in. They said, hey, Kent, is that the last banana? I said, yep, and I got it. How many of you have an older brother or sister? You know that wonderful feeling you get when you finally pull one over on them? Boy, that morning I had them and I knew it. They wanted my banana. But big brothers do not beg little brothers for anything. They either beat them up and take it away by brute force, or they lie to them and trick them out of it somehow. So my brothers said, uh, hey, Kent, do you know how bananas are made? I said, no. I was only six years old. It's been proven in laboratory tests. The brain doesn't even start to grow until kids are 18 to 20. How many parents can verify that one from raising kids? Yep. I said, no, how are bananas made? And they said, well, down in South America, they have these spiders that live up in the trees, and when they die, all their legs fold up, and mold begins to grow on the dead spider legs.